it's an important day because here in, in the New York City area, at least, a lot of folks are talking about pay transparency. It became law starting today. New York City businesses are required to add salary ranges to their job posts. A lot of states are considering this or have already done it. Does that make it harder or easier for workers to now ask for more money? Well, I have to say, Sharon, pay transparency is something that people have been asking about, and it's been holding people back from either applying to jobs or staying in jobs. So I actually think that pay transparency is going to be a tremendous market advantage for companies that implement it. Now, there's still going to be a range, of course, Sharon. It's just that you'll have a sense of what the brackets are and how you can position yourself toward the top of that range. All right. Well, Alex, one of the things that you talk about in your book that I love is that it's so important to focus on asking and not arguing. Why should you do that? You know, Sharon, I was born in Brooklyn. We love to argue. It's an <laughs> art form. But it doesn't actually get us the best results. Why? When you are negotiating, especially over money, especially in a salary situation, you want to do a couple of things. One, you want to get as much information as you can up front about the role, the reporting structure, and how they're thinking about compensation. Number two, you're looking to establish rapport and establish a relationship that's going to take you not through this, just through this one negotiation, but a year or two later when you're asking for a raise or promotion. And do you know, Sharon, that the people who come into negotiation and ask questions first are the people who do both of those. They make the most money at the table and they establish the best relationships. But the, the questions aren't, why am I not being paid as much as this person or why did I get overlooked for this job or why? It's what and what, what should the what be? You say ask what. When you're looking for that uh, new job or want a promotion, what's the first question that you should be asking? Sure. So. First, let me say why, why doesn't work. Why puts people on the defensive. You get a because. Instead, I want people to focus on asking what, what is the salary range for this position? What will be required of me in the role? Ask how, how are you valuing within that band? And my favorite question of all, Sharon, is tell me. Tell me more about the position. Tell me how you came up with the pay structure. Tell me the kinds of qualifications that would land people toward the top of that salary band. And finally, Sharon, tell me what you need from me to show that that's where I am. When you're trying to get the information, so you have some knowledge going into it about what you should be asking and how to ask these questions, what are some places to go to get that kind of research done so you know what you need to ask for when you're vying for that promotion? Absolutely. So there are online websites. In the last segment, people talked about Glassdoor. There's Payscale. I would say take the websites, start there. But ultimately, what I hear over and over again from my clients and people out in the marketplace is you need what we call human intelligence. Tap your networks. Figure out who do you know? Who do you know who has a friend at this company? Over and over again, Sharon, I have seen that people may be on the internet underestimating what the true salary and perks are. The more you can get connections on the inside, the more you can get that information. And if you are at an information disparity, so if I'm coming into a job situation, I don't have a connection, I don't know, I would recommend letting them suggest a salary range first. Oftentimes, if we don't have the information we need, we can lowball ourselves. And I would love to see from the company first, how are they thinking about this so that then I can respond and push that higher to where my qualifications match. It's so important to do that kind of research and to talk to people. But the reality is, at least for someone who's been in her career for 20 some years like I have, when I started, no one talked about money. That was not something you did. did. The senior people in my uh, magazine that I worked for, the first thing they told me was to sign up for the 401k, but they never talked about how much money they were making. And I was trying to figure out, how do I live in New York City and do a 401k and pay for everything at the same time? There was never discussion on that. So how do you make sure you have that reliable network internally, on LinkedIn, 
uh, you know, in the industry? How do you develop those relationships where you can really trust people enough to discuss it? Yeah, it's a great question. And fortunately, as you describe from the generational numbers, I think this is changing. I see many more younger people, especially women, gathering networks together where we can ask each other, how much did you make for this role? What are the different buckets of compensation for which I might ask? Because it's not all about salary. There are lots of different ways to make up an attractive package. So what I would recommend is, first of all, gather your courage. You know, this is not as taboo a question it used to be. If you're putting the relationship first, you're making genuine relationships in the workplace, oftentimes those can be a source for don't do it in the office, go out to the next town over, but you can start to have those conversations. The other thing I will say, Sharon, is that especially for women, we've now seen a rise in networking clubs like Chief, The Crew, Luminary, other clubs where women from different companies but perhaps in the same sector, can get together for those off-record conversations and to talk about what they're making. I always tell people, as a last piece of advice, the further you get up in your career, the more you want to just not just look forward, but look out and around. What are the horizontal connections you need in your industry to be able to rise and get to that next step? And those networks, Alex, are really important also to find out more about the total compensation. So many more, again, it's generational, but so many more people, I think, younger people are coming into the workplace saying, it's not just about the salary you're suggesting here. What kind of restricted stock units are you offering me? What kind of other financial compensation may I be able to get? What type of flexibility are you offering me? That's an important benefit to me as well. So how do you go about asking about the total package, the total compensation, which may be far more than just a salary. Yes, absolutely. So first of all, this is where doing your prep work and tapping your connections can be helpful even before you go into that conversation. But here too, Sharon, questions can be powerful. And I want everyone listening to know this. They expect you to negotiate. They expect you to ask questions. So if we come in and you tell me just about the salary, I might say, thank you. What other buckets of possible compensation do we have available? What's available to us? I've known people who negotiated not just for salary, not just for bonus, also important, not just for equity, but even things like uh, travel for conferences, for uh, training or skills work, for mentorship, for flexibility. There are so many different questions, and I always recommend people saying, what else is available to us when they are going in to negotiate? Over and over again, if you can't quite get there on the salary, absolutely push on that, but then ask, how else can we bring the total value of this package in line with what I should be making market with my qualifications? Should you use those same tactics when negotiating a severance package to leave a company? Great question. The best time to negotiate a severance package may not be when you think. It is at your moment of maximum leverage. It's when the company hires you. It's kind of like negotiating the prenup, right? So what happens if this marriage doesn't work? How are we going to allocate this going forward? You first of all want to research what is the standard practice? There's usually a range, depending on how long you've been there and other factors. Find that out, but then, when you are negotiating your package up front, negotiate severance. This is a time when the company is spending hypothetical dollars on you rather than actual dollars at the end of your term, and so it's a great place to do it. But you can also negotiate absolutely on your way out the door. Think about every leverage point you might have, and also you're going to save the company time and money by you know, accepting the terms of the severance. And so that can be a great time to ask for more. Maybe it's more dollars, more months, more time. That's such great advice. One other thing that you said in the book I have to bring up because it was one of my favorite lines. Silence is your superpower in negotiation. What? I'm supposed to be asking for all these things and you're saying I should be silent? Is that really a tactic? I know, Sharon. Once again, here we are in New York, right? Born in Brooklyn. <laughs> Silence is not natural for me. 
But do you know it might be one of the most powerful tools you have? Actually, psychology research that came out last year found that high value negotiation moves tend to come after a period of silence. How long? Three and a half seconds. I won't demonstrate on air. It feels forever, but when you do this, you prevent yourself from bidding against yourself and you look like you are completely confident and in command. There are few things more powerful than simply asking a powerful question, tell me what we can do to bring this compensation in line with market, sit back, wait for them to answer, and oftentimes that gives people the few seconds they need to really consider how much they want you and to give you that number you're asking for.